Hi there, everyone, and welcome to The Daily Gardener, and thank you for listening. I'm your host, Jennifer Ebling. It's December 3rd. Today, I'll talk about the difference between gourds and squash. We'll also celebrate the man whose philanthropy made the Arnold Arboretum possible. We'll recognize the painter who said flowers made him paint freely. And we'll salute the English author who gave us a lovely poem called The Garden Year. And we'll grow that garden library today with a cookbook from two chefs who teach authentic seasonal cooking with ingredients from your garden in the most delicious and perfect ways possible. And then we'll wrap things up with the English naturalist who campaigned and won Green Spaces for England, and her work led to the National Trust. But first, here's a gentle reminder to head on over to the website for the show. You can find it at thedailygardener.org. The website has all of the show notes for every episode, and there's an entire section devoted to botanical history and botanical literature. You'll find all of the book recommendations over at the website. And while you're there, you can also sign up for the free Friday newsletter for listeners of the show. Every Friday, I put together a newsletter that has a personal update from me. I feature garden-related items and reminders for your calendar. You'll get the entire list of the Grow That Garden Library featured books for the week. There are plenty of garden gift ideas and garden and inspired recipes, plus exclusive updates regarding the show and more. And every single week, one lucky subscriber wins a book from the Grow That Garden Library bookshelf. So head on over to thedailygardener.org the next time you're online. Today's curated news was featured over on Botany One in a piece written by Hugh Dickinson. And the title caught my attention. It says, the same mobile protein governs seed size and inflorescence structure. It's a fascinating piece. And if you'd like to check out this article or any of my curated news articles and original blog posts for yourself, you're in luck because I share all of it with the listener community in the free Facebook group for the show. It's called The Daily Gardener Community. So you never have to search for links or track things down. The next time you're on Facebook, just search for Daily Gardener Community, where you'd search for a friend and request to join. I'd love to meet you in the group. Here's today's brevities. On this day, December 3rd, In 1492, Christopher Columbus noted in his diary, I climbed a mountain and came to level ground, which was sown with many different crops and gourds. Well, the gourds Columbus was referring to were actually squashes that were turned into utensils. Many people confuse gourds and squash, So here's a little gourd and squash trivia to keep your knowledge of gourds and squash sharp. Gourds and squash are members of the Cucurbitaceae plant family, which includes over 700 species. And both squash and gourds are fruits because they're part of the flower that contains the seeds. And like grapes, they grow on a vine. The fruits of gourds, squashes, and pumpkins are berries known as peepo. And loofahs are a type of gourd, and they come from inside the gourd. Pumpkin is a squash. And while most gourds are not suitable to eat, squash has a mild taste and is delicious. The main difference between summer squash and winter squash is how long they can be stored. Summer squashes are soft-skinned. They're harvested in the summer, and they need to be eaten quickly. Think of zucchini and yellow crookneck squash. Winter squashes, on the other hand, are hard-shelled, and they can be stored for months. Think of acorn squash. And here's a little gourd joke for you. What vegetable keeps your garden safe. 
a security gourd. Lastly, if you enjoy puns, puns about gourds abound on the internet, and they are truly some of the worst puns. So here's a little mashup for you. You'd butternut forget to grow gourds because they're gorgeous. But I'm bum. And today is the anniversary of the death of the wealthy businessman, philanthropist, and botanist, James Arnold, who died on this day, December 3rd, in 1868. James is the namesake for Harvard's Arnold Arboretum, the very first arboretum in the United States. James was born to a Quaker family in Providence, Rhode Island, and in 1807, James married Sarah Roach. Had James not married Sarah, there would have probably never been an Arnold Arboretum. Sarah's father was part of an exceptionally wealthy whaling family, and James eventually became a partner in his father-in-law's business. James used his wealth to buy an 11-acre estate in New Bedford, Massachusetts. As Quakers, James and Sarah focused less on making their home ostentatious and more on developing their gardens. Together, James and Sarah searched for interesting plants and trees for their home gardens during their many trips to Europe. And history tells us that the Arnold property was so stunning that the gardens were open to the public on Sundays. In 1857, even the writer Herman Melville visited the Arnold Garden. The Unitarian minister William Potter called the Arnold estate the most conspicuous among all our homes for culture, for hospitality, and for charity. As both James and Sarah loved gardening and plants, their friends included many naturalists of their time. John James Audubon, Ralph Waldo Emerson, Henry David Thoreau, and Bronson Elcott, Louisa May Elcott's father. When James died in 1868, as part of his will, He left $100,000 in the hands of three trustees, Francis Parker, John James Dixwell, and George Emerson. Emerson and Dixwell personally knew Asa Gray at Harvard, and they also knew that Harvard needed a botanic garden. James' trustees included a bodacious mission for the Arboretum to collect every kind of tree and shrub that would grow outdoors in Massachusetts. By 1873, Charles Sprague Sargent was hired to be the director of the Arnold Arboretum, a position he would hold for over four decades. And James Arnold's gift and Charles Sprague Sargent's leadership created the world-class Arboretum we still enjoy today. And today is the anniversary of the death of the Impressionist painter Pierre-Auguste Renoir, who died on this day, December 3rd, in 1919. Renoir said when he was painting flowers, he was able to paint, quote, freely and boldly, without the mental effort he made with a model. And he also said, if you paint the leaf on a tree without using a model, your imagination will only supply you with a few leaves. But nature offers you millions, all on the same tree. The artist who paints only what is in his mind must very soon repeat himself. And it was Renoir who said, What seems most significant to me about Impressionism is that we have freed painting from the importance of the subject. I am at liberty to paint flowers and call them flowers without their needing to tell a story. And speaking of stories, here's a little known story about Renoir. For many years, 
he hung a sign on his garden gate, which read, No Renoirs sold here. Beware the dog. In unearthed words, today's words are from the English author Sarah Coleridge and her poem, The Garden Year. January brings the snow, makes our feet and fingers glow. February brings the rain, thaws the frozen lake again. March brings breezes, loud and shrill, to stir the dancing daffodil. April brings the primrose sweet, scatters daisies at our feet. May brings flocks of pretty lambs, skipping by their fleecy dams. June brings tulips, lilies, roses, fills the children's hands with posies. Hot July brings cooling showers, apricots, and gillyflowers. August brings the sheaves of corn, then the harvest home is born. Warm September brings the fruit, sportsmen then begin to shoot. Fresh October brings the pheasant, then to gather nuts is pleasant. Dull November brings the blast, then the leaves are whirling fast. Chill December brings the sleet, blazing fire, and Christmas treat. It's time to grow that garden library with today's book, Earth to Table, by Jeff Crump and Bettina Shorman. This book came out in 2018, and the subtitle is Cooking with Good Ingredients Through the Seasons. In this book, slow food advocates and accomplished chefs Jeff Crump and Bettina Shorman create approachable everyday recipes with the garden harvest. This book was a 2018 winner for Excellence in Book Design, which is a feature that readers will notice right away when they get this cookbook. By advocating for a seasonal approach to cooking, Jeff and Bettina show you how to seek out the freshest ingredients for your prep table and your dining table. Earth to Table Every Day features 140 wholesome, effortless, everyday recipes. I love Jeff and Bettina's cookbook because they infuse their book with brilliant stories and gorgeous photography that makes their recipes compelling and memorable. My favorites include arugula and fennel salad, mushroom tarts, creamy hummus with fried chickpeas, buttermilk fried chicken, apple bacon pizza, rhubarb upside down cake, love that one in the spring, chocolate brownies, and raspberry swirl cheesecake. This book is 288 pages of authentic seasonal cooking from two chefs dedicated to making and using ingredients from the garden in the most delicious and perfect ways possible. You can get a copy of Earth to Table by Jeff Crump and Bettina Shorman and support the show using the Amazon link in today's show notes for around $18. Finally, here's something sweet to revive the little botanic spark in your heart. Today is the birthday of the English activist, conservationist, and naturalist Octavia Hill, who was born on this day, December 3rd, in 1838. From the time she was 13 years old, Octavia worked to make life better for the working class. As Octavia matured, she crystallized her advocacy. And one of Octavia's most passionate causes was getting access to nature for all of the folks living in large cities like London. Historical records tell us that Octavia was a small woman, she didn't care a lick for fashion, and she had beautiful brown eyes. She was also an exceptional speaker and a persuasive advocate, as is evident by a comment from the Bishop of London. This is something he said after meeting with Octavia. 
She spoke for a half an hour. I never had such a beating in all my life. In 1884, Octavia's sister and fellow activist Miranda Hill remarked, It has come to the point when two peers and a cabinet minister call and consult her in one week. Octavia's work to save green spaces throughout England led to the establishment of the National Trust. And it was Octavia Hill who said, The need of quiet the need of air, the need of exercise, and I believe the sight of sky and of things growing are human needs, common to all. And finally, gardeners will chuckle at this little passage from a letter Octavia wrote to her sister Gertrude on October 22nd, 1852. Oh, Gertrude, I am so happy so very, very happy. I wish you were here with me. You would so love all my beautiful things. I have a little room all to myself. When anything is wrong or unjust downstairs, I have only to come up to my own little room, and it is so still. I usually have some flowers, for the ladies are very kind in bringing me them. I have a few poor little plants that I am fond of. Then I have 11 dear little snails. They are such darlings. Thanks for listening to The Daily Gardener. And remember, for a happy, healthy life, garden every day. The Daily Gardener is produced in lovely Wyoming, Minnesota with the help of Paige Mance, Brooke Beerbaum, Kiana Raley, Maddie Doyle, Natalie Decker, and Eric Begay. You can find The Daily Gardener on all your favorite social media. You can follow the show on Instagram. And listeners always have a standing invitation to join the free Facebook group for the show. Just search for Daily Gardener Community the next time you're on Facebook and request to join. All the stories and books that are featured on the show can be found over at thedailygardener.org, thedailygardener.org. And while you're there, be sure to sign up for my free Friday newsletter. Last but not least, you can share your own gardener greetings on the show by emailing me at jennifer at thedailygardener.org. I'm your host, Jennifer Ebling, and as always, have a great day in the garden, and we'll see you tomorrow.